Welcome. Thanks again for joining us here uh, at Discovery Point on this Sunday morning. Also, we just want to take a moment and, uh, you know, just recognize those on this Memorial Day weekend who gave their lives uh, while serving our country. So maybe that was someone uh, that you knew or someone in your family. And so we do want to honor them and remember them this weekend. And thank you uh, if that was someone that uh, you knew and loved and uh, for their service. And so we, we are honored you're with us this weekend. And of course, we're continuing this conversation around the exchanged life. And this is such an important conversation. We're glad that you are joining us. So uh, let's get ready. Uh, let's uh, be ready to receive uh, this message today and this, this worship, this time we get to spend together. It's so important for us, and uh, we are so glad that you're joining us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this chance to be together. We ask that uh, you speak to us, Father. We're ready to hear from you as we continue this conversation on the exchanged life. So, Father, I pray for those watching uh, right now that you, you encourage them, you speak to them, that they sense your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. Well, let's go into a time of worship and hearing the message. I was buried beneath my who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. Well, I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. Call my name. Now your mercy has saved my soul And your freedom is all I know The old made new Jesus, when I met you You called my name heavy the chains break at the weight of your glory needed shelter i was an orphan and you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing now your love's in the air that i'm breathing i have a future my eyes are open wide when you call my name And all my days 
I've been held in your hands from the moment I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as Father, I've known you as friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Sing that out all my life. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, surrender now and give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Well, all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God One more time with your voice I will sing of the goodness of God. But I will sing of the goodness of God. When peace like a river attends my way. When sorrows like sea bells roll
The two men, we're going to talk about two men tonight. We're going to finish Romans 5 and um, pick up on the verse after where Greg uh, left it last week. And so the text is Romans 5, 20, 12 through 21, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. So I'll read it first, then we're going to come back and go through it uh, verse by verse. It says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the, law, until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more than grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting to con in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness, to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, <clears throat> we thank you for this time tonight. We thank you for the, your word. But we thank you, Lord, what you did for us, that you so loved us, Lord Jesus, that you gave your life for it, for us to purchase us back and to redeem us back to God. And Lord, you know the needs here tonight. And so I pray that by the Holy Spirit you'd minister to all of us only as you can. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So, verse 12 starts with the first word, therefore. And so, when you see therefore, you need to read the verses prior to that to find out what it's there for. Huh? So that kind of got kind of sticks, Okay. And so for verses 1 to 11, there's a lot to choose there. It's very rich. I decided to, I'm just going to choose Romans 5.8. It says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's a good one to read. Then go into, therefore, verse 12. Just as through one man's sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Just as the one man's sin entered the world. <clears throat> you got to notice that as we're doing this, the Apostle Paul regarded Genesis 3 as totally 
historical. I know it's a little hard to read that. And true. If this would be a lot of theologians today, they'd be saying, well, you know that Adam and Eve story was just an allegory and just a story. Paul didn't do any of that. But what he said, what he's, is what they understood Genesis 3, he said that's a historical fact, okay? Adam and Eve were real people, and what they did has a lasting effect to the present day. The principal death was introduced into the world when Adam sinned, and unfortunately it has reigning still on earth ever since. We live in sin, don't we? We live in a broken world. And even though we've come to faith in Christ and our lives have been transformed and changed, we're still in a brokenness. There's a tension between the flesh and the spirit. And then we're going to see all the way through. Okay, so verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Let's go to read 14 too. Let's bring that up. Bring up the next slide, please. Nevertheless, death reigning from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But notice what it says. Man sinned. And he'd fallen short. He was driven out of the garden. And even though law didn't come to Moses, from Adam to Moses, people were sinners. They were broken. They still needed redemption. And they didn't understand all these things. So God in his mercy did not put upon them, according to that transgression, in other words, the law didn't come until Moses. So he did not impute that upon them until then. That's hallelujah moment, isn't it? Even then his grace was being shown. And so, according to this likeness, as Moses is a type of Christ, Adam transgressed. And now the laws come as a type of him who was to come. And we're looking forward to the one that we can bring redemption for that. So, death reigned. Next slide, please. Death reigned showing that the principal sin was at work in every human. It was there. You know, we don't like to think of that word, and we don't like to think of us as sinners, and we, you know, just say, but we are. Yeah. But you know what? It's okay. You were born this way. You couldn't do anything about it. But the scripture tells me that Christ loves sinners. Huh? Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad that Christ loves sinners? Because death is reigning. And showing the principle of sin was at work in every single human being. Right. Even little children. Babies. You say, oh, pastor, they're just perfect little things. Just give them a little while. <laughs> huh? I remember the first time, Renee, we had, we had two children. She was the oldest one. And there was about three years between them. And she did something that she knew she wasn't supposed to do. And Ronnie was just born. I mean, he's just a little thing. And I started quizzing her on, on this, and she says, I didn't do that. He did. <laughs> yeah, impossible. But she began to blame him. Yeah. Huh? That's in our nature, isn't it? Yeah. That brokenness is there in our nature. So death reigned, showing that the principal sins at work in every human being, every last one of us. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense, for if by one man's offense many died, 
much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Amen. See, Adam gave an offense that he had, and he had consequences for the entire human race. As a result of Adam's offense, death came. Many died. And we know that. And that brokenness is still here. And just as sure as I'm standing here, I'm going to die one day, so, unless the Lord takes me out of here. Huh? But we face these things. We know these things. It's, it's, it's in us. But Jesus gives a free gift that has consequences for the entire human race, but in a different way. Through the free gift of Jesus, the grace of God abounded to many. Man sinned. When Adam sinned, we're born 100% sinners. But Jesus came as a, with a free gift. It has consequences for the entire human race, if we'll let it. But in a different way. Through this free gift, the grace of God abounds to many. That's a hallelujah moment, isn't it? Next slide, please. Verse 16, it says, And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for judgment which came from the one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Condemnation, we're condemned. We're the, the penalty is there. And actually, one of the things we talk about condemnation, and Adam felt that right off the bat when they sinned. See, God in the evening every day would come down in the cool of the evening and walk with him. And after he'd sinned, there was something different in him. He didn't look forward to God. He now wanted to hide from God. And even in that hiding, he knew he was condemned. He knew he did wrong. And I've said this before, and I, and I do believe this. If you'll notice in that story, God did not wait for Adam to call out and seek him. God went and sought him out, didn't he? And I am thoroughly convinced that had God not done that, Adam would have never sought him out. The condemnation was there. He did not do it, but God so loved him. And God so loved the world. And when we think of the world, we think of the earth, that God loved the earth. And that's part of it. But that word, the Greek, is actually cosmos. He loved the cosmos, the whole order of everything. And sin put it all out of whack. And even creation groans for the day that it can be back in the proper order. That's what it says. See, through Adam, judgment came, resulted in condemnation. Part of condemnation is the absence of knowing God. And what they missed, and how that played out, do not know. But we know in the cool of the evening that God came to speak with him and to be with him. We never think about this. I got, maybe I'm, going, I'm going to go off on a little tangent maybe, okay? Probably not too bad. Absence is, condemnation is the absence of knowing God. But you know that there is a relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we don't always see that, okay? They're all God. That's the triune God. 
But there's a dance that goes on between them, between father to son and son to father, and father and son to Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit back to father and son. There's this eternal, endless dance of love that's going on that Adam was became a part of, and now because of what he did, there is an absence of that union. We don't totally get that. I can say those words, but do I totally understand what I just said, how that works? No, we can't. We can't know that, but it's there. Right. And we got to understand that, that it's there. So through Adam, judgment came, resulting in condemnation, and death reigned over men. There's also the result of Jesus' free gift. Grace abounded to many, resulted in justification. Easy little word. You know, a hard word, but I'm going to give you an easy little thing to remember. I'm, I used to have, uh, in the church service, we had, we had some of the children that would be in, in the main worship service. And, they, they, and, I, and I heard this. This is not something I came up with. But I latched on to it. Justification is justified to be justified. It's justified, never sinned. Huh? Yeah. You see that in there? Just if I'd, and justification, or justified. Yeah. justified. Justified, never sinned. That's, That's a hallelujah moment. That's what Jesus did for us. Because many offenses, it wasn't just one, but there's many offenses, were laid on him. Yeah. Abundant grace is the gift of righteousness and life. Next slide, please. So, I'm going to talk about this. this. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Right. So, sin came 100%, didn't it? Now, we've got to be careful with this as we, as we look at this. Well, I want to say it this way. We'll get ahead of myself. Before we go to the next slide. We know that Jesus is king. Amen. huh? He's prophet, priest, and king. But if you look at the verbiage that Paul is using, I want to say, suggest that because he is the father of us all, that Adam's a king. Next slide, please. We could say that both Adam and Jesus are kings, each instituting a reign. But under Adam, death reigned. And that's not a very good reign, is it? Huh? Under Jesus, we can reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. He came to bring us life, an abundant life. So, next slide, please. Verse 18, therefore, there's that therefore, but we don't have to jump back because we've already been reading them. So, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulted in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. We've got to be careful with this verse. Because through Adam, sin came, and 100% it fell on all men. If we read that that same way, then we'd say that everybody's going to be saved, wouldn't we? But we know the Bible doesn't teach that. But what it does say is that what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross and the sin debt for all who believe in him. Huh? All that be, have become follow him and surrendered their life to him that results in life to all men. All men who what? became born again. Right. See, we've got to be careful with that verse, because there's people that say that, well, everyone's going to get saved. There's... And that's not what that verse is saying. Amen. Verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, obedience many will be made righteous. That's good stuff. So, one man's offense, one man's righteous act. 
From this passage, Adam and Jesus are sometimes known as the two men. That's why I called my message the two men. So that's what they're talking about. One man's offense, one man's righteous act. Okay. Between them, they represent all humanity. We don't always look at it like this. Because we tend to say, well, you know, we always want to blame it. Everything goes, you know, well, you don't accept Jesus Christ and you belong to the devil. Well, there's truth to that. Because man fell and become enslaved by the evil one, didn't we? But the reality is, you're either in Adam or you're in Christ. And there's a price in each one of those. So, between them, they represent all humanity. And everyone is identified in either Adam or Jesus. We are born identified with Adam. We may be born again into identification with Jesus. That's what Jesus was telling Nicodemus, wasn't it? He was the leader, and he didn't understand these things. Well, how do I go back to my mother's womb and be born again? Nicodemus, you should understand these things. Unless a man become born again in a spiritual birth, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So, moreover, the law entered the offense that the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Amen. See, we don't even think like that, do we? My first reaction, and I'm and it's in here and you know where I wrote it out, is my first reaction if, if sin was if it was that dark and that sinful, oh well, God's gotta be angry with us. Yeah. Huh? See, that's the problem Adam had in the garden after he did what he did. The love of God goes so far beyond that what we can even begin to comprehend. That where that darkness is and all the wickedness and evil, we just give up. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Wow. Where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Amen. We might have expected that sin abounded. Yeah. Next slide, please. Paul has shown us that the law does not justify us. You can't be justified by the law. Right. None of us can. You know, we always have in the Bible stories that we read, that, and, and, it's, and it's true, but that... Moses did sin. He got angry. Remember when he hit the rock and he got angry and then he can't, now he can't go in? I want to suggest to you he was never going in. Because the law can't get you there. You can't work your way to heaven. The law cannot get you there. And so... So that as sin reigned in death, even so, grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. See, all the reasons are in Jesus. That's right. It's all in Him. Amen. None of the reasons are in myself. Exactly. Next slide, please. You don't have another one after that? Oh, well, I do. <laughs> All the reasons are in Jesus. None of the reasons are in myself. Grace doesn't reign through self. No. We can't work our way there. It's not about how good we are and all the things that we can do. Grace reigns through Jesus Christ. Grace is the movement of God toward us. That's what grace is. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As Adam sinned in the garden, he sought him out. He knew exactly where he was, but what did he say to him? Adam, where art thou? Where are you? He knew exactly where he was. He was trying to get him to respond. 
You see, grace is the movement of God toward us. Faith is the movement we make towards God. They both work in tandem. Accomplished by grace through faith. Huh? The Holy Spirit gives us the faith by grace to enter into mutual interaction. With the God the Father and God the Son, by the power of God the Holy Spirit, all three of them, Amen. we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. That's what it does for us. Amen. That takes grace of God to be working in us. Amen. Amen. You see, he reaches out to you and I. You know, I use this verse a lot. You probably say, oh, Pastor Ron, here he goes again. 2 Corinthians 5.21. But he became sin for us, that we could become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. One man's offense brought death. And one man's righteous act brought, brought eternal life. Amen. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I encourage you to turn to him while he may be found. It's not by accident you're here. Amen. God and his divine destiny for you and I mm -hmm. has a plan he wants to carry out and transform us that one day will rule and reign with him. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, as I heard that message from Pastor Ron, uh, one of the things that I took away was that, that, that grace is God moving toward us, and faith is us moving toward God. You know, it's just one of those insights that I, I think will, will probably stick uh, in my mind. And in fact, uh, someone showed me in their Bible that they actually wrote uh, that phrase that Pastor Ron shared in this message in their Bible to remind them of the, the power of God's, uh, God's work in our lives as we examine the two men, Adam and Christ. Well, just some opportunities that we want you to be aware of. Vacation Bible School is coming up uh, beginning on June the 13th here at Discovery Point. We are literally at about 75% capacity. So if you have a child or grandchild that is wanting to attend VBS, you're going to have to go to our website, discoverypointaz.com, and register your child. Also, next weekend here at Discovery Point is our third Core 4 class on Serving Christ. We would love to have you attend. happens at 9 a.m., and you can just show up for that class, and it's, it's a great way to understand more about how that we serve Christ and serve Him well. Also, guys, on June the 19th, we're having a men's gathering at 9 a.m., right here, and we'd love to have you. That's Father's Day weekend, and we are just inviting all the men. You don't have to be a father. It's a men's gathering, and uh, we want to have a time together of encouragement, of interaction, of conversation, and hopefully of strengthening our faith and our relationships. Well, stay connected with us. Of course, you, you know the platforms, but just Stay in the tomb, stay in the loop, and we want you to know what's happening here. Also, before I go, we want to pray for you. Send us your prayer request. Use our website. Uh, use the app that we offer. We want to pray for you. And, of course, if we're your church home here at Discovery Point, we always uh, are so grateful for your, your partnership in the gospel through your resources. And so uh, as you uh, sow into this ministry, you can do that, of course, through the website, through the app. But we are so appreciative of your Continue support for the ministry, and so we thank you for sowing seed here. Well, we want you to have a, a great Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we just want you to remember uh, that we're thinking about you, we're praying for you if we're not seeing you in person. And, uh, you know, when you feel led, when God calls you back to our family fellowship in person, we'll be ready to have you and receive you. God bless you. Have a great weekend.